Today I'm going to show you how to use Logisim, which is the simulation environment for logic devices. And during the second half of the semester, we're going to use Logisim to build a MIPS style processor and kind of learn how the system is architected and how we put everything together and stuff like that, which is going to be pretty cool. So uh, what I wanted to do today is show you how to build a simple 1-bit ALU and to get used to the Logisim environment. What we're going to start off with is some basics. Up here in the corner uh, you have a couple of tools. You've got the pointer tool. This is our simulation and interaction tool. That's what give, gives us the little finger. We've got the design tool which is the arrow that allows us to select uh, devices and put them onto the, uh, the world into the simulation environment and to make designs. And we have a text tool that allows us to do uh, little uh, labels and stuff like that. We're going to be mostly using the design tool and uh, interacting with it using the interaction tool. So let's go to the design tool and the first thing we're going to do is place a simple logic gate to see how everything works. Right? So up here you've got your basics, you've got not and an or, but you've also got a whole list of other gates down here in uh, the gates menu on the side. And this is your library over here. This is all of the things that are available to you that Logisim gives you by nature. And we're going to be building some tools into the library as we go. So uh, I'm just going to select the AND gate and I'm going to place one of those. And now that you can see I've placed the AND gate and over here on the left you've got all these little blue dots. And these blue dots are our inputs, the red dots are our outputs. And they're blue because they're disconnected. When they're connected properly to an input or an output they'll go either uh, kind of a light green or a dark green. And that'll tell us whether they're activated or not. And you'll see that in a second. Down here we've got the properties of the of the gate or whatever the device is that's selected. In this case it's facing east and I can use the arrow keys. If I press up it makes it point up. Uh, if I press uh, left it makes it point left and so on. I'm going to make it point right uh, like normal. Uh, data bits tells us how many each of the inputs operates on. So in this case if I changed it to uh, say three data bits these uh, the blue dots change to black dots and each one of those is three bits so I can and three bits together all at once which is pretty cool. Uh, we're going to stick with one bit at a time. Uh, I can change the gate size from uh, medium to uh, narrow which is a tiny version and you can see it spins out there. I'm going to keep the narrow version. And I can choose the number of inputs. In this case it's an and gate that ands together five inputs all at once. I only need two so I'm going to pick two from the list and now it looks more like our normal AND gate. I've got two inputs and one output. I can also give it a, a label and I can change the font of it, how it looks and, and stuff like that uh, but I don't really need to right now. Next I'm going to show you some inputs. So the, the inputs are one type of pin. So we've got two types of pins. We've got an input pin which is square and we've got outputs which have rounded edges. Right, so here I've got an, uh, an output and I've got an input and I'm going to add one more uh, input here. And then we can start wiring these up. So now that I'm in the design tool still, I just pick on one of the pin connections and drag it over. And you can see that uh, it just makes the connections automatically. And as I keep adding them, it ch things change from blue or red to green. And that tells me that I've got a valid data path. right? Then I can switch to the interaction view and I can start playing with this thing. So I can actually turn each of these on and off. And when I click on it, it turns from 0 to 1, which uh, makes the line go from dark green, which indicates a 0, to light green, which indicates a 1. And you can see when I click both of them together, we get the regular AND output. Uh, if both of them are not activated, the output is not activated. And this output will tell us uh, all kinds of stuff too, uh, which is super cool. right? So we're going to build an ALU for the MIPS processor using this process. So here we've got our basic AND, and we want to add these other operations too. We've got OR, XOR, NOR, and ADD SUB. So these are the things that we want our ALU to do. We're also going to do a, a less than operation uh, that we looked at before in class. Uh, so to make those, we're just going to start putting down these gates. <laughs> And finally, I'm going to put down an, put an adder. The adder is under the arithmetic block, and there's a basic, very basic adder, and we're going to be adding just two bits at a time. So it's a one-bit adder. 
and I'll drop that right here. And you can see it's got a carry in input, it's got a carry out output, a one bit output, and two inputs here, right? Uh, so now I've got my inputs and I need to uh, wire them up so that they're connected to all these things simultaneously. So this is going to be my A input and I can go here to my label and make this my B input. And if you want to change where the label location is, you can put it on the bottom or you can put it on the top or I'm going to keep it on the e not east, west side there and I'm going to pull these out so we can make uh, nice clean connections to all the other uh, items on the list here. right? So uh, I'm going to go through and we're going to connect each one of these. I'm going to connect all the A's uh, to the same location, to the top inputs of these gates, and then I'm going to connect all the B's just like that. right? And this is my output. Uh, I'm going to call it result. Awesome. I'm going to pull it over here. Now the problem is that I've got all these outputs and I need to combine them all together so that we share one result. So what I'm going to use is a multiplexer. Uh, and we're going to, uh, under here, under the plexers folder, there is a multiplexer option. Uh, we've got one, two, three, four, five uh, operations plus the less than operation, which means I have six operations, which means that I need three select bits to capture six operations. Uh, I'm going to do one data bit at a time, which is totally cool, and I'm going to put my select location on the bottom left, on the top right. All right. So here's my MUX. This is the select location. I'm going to not include the enable. This is the selector right here, and then I've got my various inputs and the single output. So I'm going to delete this wire, and I'm going to put these guys right here, put my result over there, and I like to line up the very top one just like that and wire these guys up like so. And I connect my result here, and it's still blue because I don't have a selector. So the selector, what's going to happen is uh, I'm going to add another input, a multi-bit input, that uh, we're going to use to choose which of the operations to execute. So I'm going to add an input here and I made it face down by pressing down and you can see uh, there's an incompatible width. This means that this is a 1-bit input and it needs a 3-bit input on this side. So to make this go away I changed the number of data bits from 1 to 3. That makes it a 3-bit input. You see it's still got squares and um, if you look when we run it you can actually see it uh, see it change. So this is selecting the OR and if I uh, make that go away, it switches those. And you notice the AND isn't changing, but the OR is, and that's uh, causing that to, to uh, change, which is pretty cool. Um, and when we don't, when we select the ones that are higher, we're selecting ones that are not connected, and that gives us a little error. So we try to avoid that. So that's our MUX. That allows us to select the operation. We also need to uh, make sure we connect to get the, a uh, the adder to work properly. We need to connect a CN. So the CN is going to be pretty handy. Uh, we're going to do one of those. We're going to put it up here. CN. I'm going to put it on the north. Uh, so that gives us a straight up adder. But we also want to do a subtraction. Right? Because right now, if I select, let's see, that's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. If I select 4, right, if I select 4, then I add them together, you can see I've got uh, A plus B, and that's 0, and I've got to carry out. I want to make sure that I carry out as well because uh, we want to make sure that that works properly so that we can use this with the next one. Uh, make it point up, call it. My mouse keeps wanting to drift off of the thing. See out. I want it to be on the south side. There we go. Um, so I can add, but I can't subtract, which is a, a problem. So uh, to make it subtract, we know that we just put a, an XOR on the front of the B input and add a add sub signal, because the XOR basically inverts B to's complement representation. We just run B over here, so this is my B signal. I run it around to the XOR, and I'm going to add a second input. 
right? So now, when we're interacting, if I want to subtract B from A, I hit the sub signal that inverts it, and I want to make sure I carry in one because that gives us the proper value. So that's our add sub. So this changes our regular add to a sub uh, by doing that. And I want to make sure I don't carry in when I'm adding. So now I've got my basic mathematical operations. We also want to support comparison. And the comparison is a, another input. Uh, we're calling it less. So we're going to add a, another input here. And that's going to be our fifth operation, our sixth operation, right? And this is just a pass-through, and you'll see how we use it when we build up the whole ALU. Our almost finished, as part of the less than operation, we also have to break out a set output. So I'm going to have a last output here, and this is called set, and put it south. So this is our, our basic ALU. We've used multiplexers, we've done outputs, and we've got uh, six operations, uh, including a uh, less than operator that we'll use later um, that supports our set less than operation uh, and stuff like that. And now we're going to, I'm going to set it clear all of these. And we can capture this as a overall object, right? So the way that we do that is we switch. So here you got, you've got the different modes. You've got a hierarchy mode, and that's the simulation hierarchy. We've got the circuit layout, which is our design environment, but we also have the object view. And what this is, is a uh, view of how the inputs and outputs are uh, oriented on a little box. So we can actually treat that whole design, uh, if we go back to this view, we can treat this whole design as one object, which is really cool, and we do it very simply. So we, when we switch to this view, we can see which ones of these are activated in the little window that shows up down in the corner. You can see them uh, show up over here. So this one is our multiplexer input. This one is our CN. This is the sub. This is A. This is B. This is less. This is C out. This is set. And this is our result, right? But we can't tell from the outside, so we want to label it, right? So we're going to spread this out a whole lot and move this guy. So that's an anchor. Uh, and you can see they only go onto dots. We should probably have enough room if I put them there. Uh, and that's the actual output. And we can move the outline back where it should be. Uh, and I want to put my select. So this is, uh, I'm going to use the text tool, or operation input. So that tells us which operation we're doing. Uh, then I want to move my, uh, this is CN, I believe. And we just want to move these around until they're arranged well. So I've just gone and arranged these uh, and the outline around so that none of the labels overlap, overlap and it's really easy to see which label is which and things like that. And now I'm going to label the whole device uh, as a whole and I'm going to call it 1-bit ALU, just like that. All right. so this is our 1-bit ALU. It's very simple and very useful. And I'm going to rename over here. This is the actual object that I'm working on. So I'm going to uh, go back to the hierarchy mode give it a name. This is my one bit ALU. And that's that. So now it shows up in the diagram. Now I'm going to make a new circuit uh, over here. This is a new object. I'm going to do add circuit. I'm going to give it a name and this is going to be our full-fledged ALU. So I hit OK. And now I've got a blank space here. I've got a brand new blank environment. We're going to use that one bit ALU to make an eight bit ALU. So I've got my one bit I'm going to stick it here, right? So you can see it's the same diagram that we had just finished, but it acts exactly like the uh, thing inside, right? This is the behavior that it's going to reflect, which is super cool. So go back to editing that one is double click right there. And you can, uh, and we'll start wiring these up. So I'm going to need eight of these guys. And I like to place them uh, in, a w in such a way that I can copy them.
So now I've got eight of these guys, right? Now, uh, these are all one-bit inputs and one-bit outputs. Now to combine them together so that we use a bus like we were using before, I want to use what's called in the wiring a splitter. So I'm going to take this guy and what this is, is it takes a multiple input. Uh, here it's already set for two, um, the combined end of the splitter, so that it's already set for two bits uh, and splits them out or it takes two bits and combines them together. So in this case we're going to use, uh, we're going to set this guy to have a fan out of 8 bits and its bit width in is 8 and you can actually tell it uh, which input which bit uh, wires to which which bit in the data which is cool and you can even have more than one um, copy of the same thing so bit 0 and bit 1 both are connected to input 1 which is, is cool they're like redundant right so there's a little bus uh, uh, thing right there, which is neat. And we're going to use that when we get uh, further in the design process. Oops, one top and one. There we go. Right. So uh, I'm going to create one 8 bit input. Uh, so here I've got a, an, a regular input, but I want it to be instead of one data bit, I want it to be 8 bits. And that gives me an 8 bit input. And this is my uh, A value. Right, and I want to copy this and do the same thing with B. So I want to change this to B. Right. So now what we want to do is wire these up. And actually, I'm going to make it face down so it's a little easier to wire. So that's my A input. This guy, this is my B input, and I'm staggering them so that when I run the wires down, uh, they don't collide with each other. Right. So here, I'm going to run my A's. I've run all of my A wires here. You can see to all my eight registers, and now I'm going to start running my B's. So now I've run all of my B wires. You can see here, every ALU has its own A and B based on the values. Um, and now we need to start hooking up the uh, ALUs to each other. So here we've got our C ins, our C outs, and our C ins. We want to connect all of those. So I'm going to start connecting those. So I've connected all of my C outs to C ins, except for the very first one and the very last one. We are not connecting those quite yet. Uh, and then we've got our op operation. So we want to make uh, our op, remember, is a 3-bit uh, input and it controls what operation the ALU performs. So we want all the 1-bit uh, ALUs to do the same thing. So I'm going to put down a new input, make it face down, uh, change its data bits to 3, and that gives us our input. And we're just going to run these to all the ALUs, the same one to every single ALU. So now we've run the operation bit bits to every single ALU, you can see there. And now our outputs are starting to look good, which is awesome. And we also want to make sure we name this. So this is also called op. And I want I like it to go on the north, which is cool. Uh, and then we've got our sub bit. Now our sub it should be our our subtract, right? And uh, our sub it's going to be the same for all of them. So we've got a new input, uh, and we're going to make that a top one two because that's a control bit. Uh, I'm going to call it sub. It should be on the north, and we're going to connect those all to all the ALUs too. All right, so it's going to go. To every single one. So now the sub is connected to every single ALU once again. And at, but at the very top, we need this C in to be connected to something. And notice that, remember that when uh, we assert sub, we also want to assert C in because we're carrying in that least significant one. So this is our least significant ALU, um, which gives us everything we need to do, right? Now, for the less than operator, uh, we have a carry in, we have an input here at the bottom, but these guys all want to be, uh, should all be set 
uh, to zero for the less. And actually what we're going to do is we're going to carry this set number or this set input all the way to the top here and take it into the less than. And all the rest of them are uh, we're going to leave the other sets unconnected and all the rest of these less thans should be connected to zero. Now to do that we've got a constant object and this constant uh, allows us to set a constant value I just changed the value to zero uh, to all the objects that we want. So here it's a constant zero and I'm going to connect every single one of the unconnected less thans besides that very last one uh, to, the, um, to that zero constant. So now that zero is connected to all of the less thans except for the least significant bit. And this is going to allow us to do uh, our set less than. So that when we do less than, we take the subtraction, uh, we subtract uh, b from a. And if a is less than b, then it'll be negative, which sets the most significant bit. And that will set the less than operator here. Um, to uh, a ver we'll set the less than input on this one to one, which allows us to copy that into a register. So this executes our set less than operation, which is really cool. So now we've got all of the inputs and outputs connected for uh, this thing, except for our results. So we need to pull these results into an 8-bit uh, thing as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy one of these again. And to do a multi multiple copy, you can drag over, and you can see they turn blue. That's our uh, that's when we know they've we've selected them. Uh, or you can uh, select and then hit Shift, not Control, to do a multiple select. And I hit copy and then paste, and I can pull it. Oops, not that one. I can pull it over here. I'm going to flip this all around so that it uh, works a little bit better uh, in this case. So here I've got my zero, I'm going to flip the B around, and I'm going to make this my R for the outside, and I want it to be on the east. Pull it over here, and it's all fancy connected. Oh, and I want it to be an output, and not an input, so I can actually change that here in the select. I want it to be an output. Awesome. And then uh, I just basically we're going to connect it to all of the result outputs here. So I've got a result, and I just go through and connect all of those up to uh, that bit. And you can see that was the least significant bit that I connected there. And these X's means that they're disconnected or they don't cares. So now I've got all my result bits from the one bit ALUs combined together. And you can see we've got a really basic ALU here. We've got uh, Basically, right now it's set to do an AND, and you can see that it only ANDs on that bit if there's a, uh, uh, a bit in both of those positions. I think uh, 1, 0 was ADD, so there I've got it adding together. You can see it ends up being 1, 1, 0. If we do the same thing and then subtract, then it's a subtraction. You can see I'm subtracting um, the, what is this, 5 from 1, which gives me negative 4 in, uh, in binary, which is super cool. Uh, and stuff like that. So that's that's the really basic ALU, but we've got one more thing. We've got a set less than operation, and remember we also need to support uh, an equal to operation for branches. So we, when we branch on equal, uh, we want to make sure that uh, that works. And to do that, we need a signal for zero, because we're looking at differences. So if they're equal, when we subtract them, we'll get zero. So we want to be able to detect when all of the results are zero, and to do that, we basically just take a uh, look at our gates again, and we take a really big nor. The width is uh, one, but the number of inputs is eight. So it's a uh, an or or a nor with eight inputs, and I'm going to connect each of these uh, inputs to one of these guys here. So now I've got my NOR connected to all of the outputs of the thing, and that gives me a little flag here that tells me whether or not the outputs are zero. So I want a simple one-bit operation, and this is I'm going to call this my zero flag. Awesome. 
So that's our complete ALU, and we can see here if we test it, uh, and we've got, say, the same thing in both registers. We're doing uh, an addition, so that one ends up being totally wrong. Uh, but if we make it subtraction, uh, the same thing subtracted from itself is zero, and we get the same output there, which is cool. So that uh, this is how we'll do our equal tests. So we'll sub do subtract, and if they're equal, uh, it'll be zero, and that'll be our little flag that we'll use for branches and everything. So that's our basic operations in Logisim. Now, what I'd like you guys to do is to set up uh, this ALU object. So go back into the editor and set up this ALU object all nice and pretty so that we can use it in designs in class. And I'm going to give you some supporting um, hardware that uh, we're going to use later. Okay? Uh, hope you like this little video, and I'll see you guys in class.